This topic will cover Revit 2015 User Interface Tips and Tricks. I'm going to go over some tips and tricks in Revit 2015 involving the user interface. I want to move and customize my Quick Access Toolbar. To move the Quick Access Toolbar, at the end of the toolbar, you'll see a little down arrow head where you can choose below the ribbon. The reason why I like the toolbar below the ribbon is so I can add common tools that I use over and over again and have plenty of space here to see them. For example, if I go to the Modify tab, right click on the line, and I can add it to the Quick Access Toolbar. Go to the Architectural tab, right click on Reference Plane, add that to the Quick Access Toolbar. I can right click on Door, add that to the Quick Access Toolbar. And to move tools around the Quick Access Toolbar, I choose the little down arrow ahead at the end of the Quick Access Toolbar and choose Customize the Quick Access Toolbar. Here is where I can move my tools around. So I choose Door and I move that up. And I can also add what is called separators between my tools. I can choose the separators and move those up and down. I can also delete tools from this dialog box. Choose the tool to delete the tool. Then when you like it, click OK. Anytime you see an arrowhead next to a panel name, like room and area, pick on the arrowhead and you can pin this panel in. And when you're done with this, you can simply pick on the pin again and it goes back to auto hide. Another feature about the ribbon in Revit is you can move your mouse on a panel name and drag that panel out. Then you can have this handy while you're working. And then when you're done with it, you move your mouse back on the panel name and you'll see a little arrowhead at the top right corner of the panel, which allows you to return this panel to the ribbon. Pick on it and now it's returned. From the application menu drop down, you'll see under recent documents, the last 15 documents I have opened up recently. In this list, you can actually pin these documents in, so they always stay in this list. And then when you're done with them, you can unpin them. And then eventually, you will not see them in this list. To move palettes around, what you can do is move your mouse on the title bar of the palette and click and drag and move it around. Now it's a floating palette. You can also do the same thing by dragging it towards the top and you'll see it resize and now I've docked that palette to the top. You can also do the same thing towards the bottom. You can also do the same thing towards the right but take the title bar of the palette and drag it into the scroll bar. And now it's docked to the right. You can also take a palette by dragging it next to another palette and now they're side by side. I can drag a palette again by choosing the title bar name and drag it on top of the other name of the other palette and now I have tabs of the two palettes. To drag it back out, you choose the tab name and drag it back out and now it's loading again. To stack the palettes together, you can again hold down on the title bar name, move it under the name of the other palette, and now they're stacked. To turn off palettes, you can choose the X from the title bar of the palette and it closes it down. To turn them back on, you can go to the View tab, User Interface drop down, and you can check them back on. 
Also notice from the user interface drop down, I can turn off navigation bar and I can turn it back on. I can turn off the status bar. Now you no longer see the status bar at the bottom of your screen. And you can turn it back on. You can also turn off parts of the status bar like work sets and design options. If I uncheck work sets, I no longer see that in the status bar. And same thing with design options. And I can turn them back on. At the end of the ribbon, you'll see a little arrowhead drop down where you can switch the ribbon look to minimize to tabs, panel titles, and to panel buttons, and cycle through all. What cycle through all does is if I pick on the little button at the end, I'm cycling between all ribbon looks. If I switch to minimum to tabs and I pick on the little icon at the end. I'm in tab look and now I'm in full ribbon look back and forth. And the same thing happens say for example if I go back to cycle through all if you double click on any tab like the annotate tab click click I've changed that ribbon look and I keep on picking on it double clicking on it until I get back to the full ribbon. Another thing we can do with the ribbon is to rearrange the tabs of the ribbon. You can hold down your control and click and drag the tabs around to rearrange them. From the ribbon, you can also turn off tabs you may not want to use. From the application menu drop down, choose options, user interface, and here's where you can turn off tabs and panel names just by unchecking them. And then click OK. So now you no longer see the systems tab or the structure tab. To turn them back on, you choose the application menu, options, user interface, and turn them back on and click OK. In Revit you can also control tooltip appearance. For example, if you go to the Modify tab, hover on top of a command, a tooltip pops up. If you wait a little longer, it gives you more information on how to do the tool and sometimes even videos. This gets controlled also from the Application menu drop down, options, user interface, and you'll see tooltip appearance. We have three choices, none, minimal, normal, and high. What none does, if I click OK, when I hover on top of a command, no, tool, no tooltip will appear. If I go back to my application menu, options, user interface, and choose Minimal it means when you have on top of command, you see help tip come up, but no additional information. If I go back one more time under options, user interface, and choose high, this will get you to a tool tip with all information. The default from options, user interface, is normal. That means when you hover on top of command and then you pause, then more information pops in. In Revit 2015, you can also can control double click actions. For example, if I go to the architectural tab and I draw a wall in, and then I choose door and place a door in that wall. And then I double click on the door, the family editor opens up and then perhaps you have to close it down. Again, if I double click on the tag, it's going to open up the family editor. 
and perhaps you have to close it down. Save change is no. To control the double click action, what you can do is from the application menu drop down, choose options, user interface, and you'll see an area here that says double click options, and then click on the customize button. You have actions for element types like family, sketched element, views, schedules on sheets, assemblies, groups, and component stair. Then you have a double click action column. You have a choice of for families, do nothing, edit family, edit type, sketched element, do nothing, edit type, edit element, views, schedules on sheets, activate the view, or do nothing, assemblies, do nothing, edit type, edit element, groups, do nothing, edit type, edit element, component stairs, do nothing, or edit element. I'm going to change the top line for family, edit family, to do nothing. I click OK and OK again. Now when I double click on a door family, it does nothing. It does not open up the family editor. If I do want to get to the family editor, I can always pick on the door and choose edit family from the ribbon. Same thing with the tag. I double click on that. It does not open up the family editor. But I can always get to the family editor by choosing edit family from the ribbon. In Revit 2015, you can also control tab switch behavior. For example, I choose the architectural tab, I pick on wall, and I draw a wall. Then I escape twice to get out or choose modify from the ribbon. It puts me back to the previous tab. To control this, you go to the application menu drop down, options, user interface, and you'll see tab switching behavior for project environment and family editor. We have two choices, stay on modified tab or return to previous tab. I'm going to switch to stay on modified tab. That's also true if you're in the family editor. Return to previous tab or stay on modified tab. So now if I click OK, I draw a wall from the architectural tab. Then I escape twice to get out. It puts me and keeps me in the Modify tab. Again, you go to the Application menu drop down, Options, User Interface to control the tab switching behavior. I'll switch it back to return to Previous tab and click OK. From the View tab, User Interface drop down, you will also see keyboard shortcuts. This is where you can assign your own shortcuts and change the shortcuts that are in here. Another place to find this dialog box is from the application menu drop down, options, user interface, keyboard shortcuts, customize. What I recommend is first exporting out the default look that comes out of the box. So you can choose export, give this a name, and save it. To modify the keyboard shortcuts, I search for a command I'm interested in adding or changing a shortcut. Notice trim extend to corner, TR, is a shortcut for this command. If I want to add another shortcut to it, I can pick on the command and type down here, TT, assign it. Now I have two shortcuts for the same command. I want to add one for trim extend single element. I can type in a shortcut of TE. Assign that. You need at least two letters for a shortcut or two characters. Trim extend multiple elements. TM. Assign that. To remove shortcuts, and pick on the shortcut again and choose remove. Then when you're done, click OK. If you want to save your keyboard shortcuts, 
click on Customize again, and Export Out. Give it a name and save it. To import shortcuts, you choose Import. Go grab that shortcut list. Click on Open. And then I'm going to choose either Merge Shortcut Settings with this one, or you can override it completely. And then when you're done, you click OK. And click OK again. And now you've modified the shortcuts. In Revit, you can also change the active theme of the user interface. From the Application menu drop-down, Options, User Interface, you'll see an active theme of light. If you change it to dark and click OK, now you have changed the theme from light to dark. To put it back, go to the Application menu drop-down, Options, User Interface, and you can switch back to light. And then click OK.